Hi friends, welcome to PSE Collegiate English. Today, let's see yet another poem, Anne Hathaway by Carol Ann Duffy. Now, Carol Ann Duffy is a British poet and playwright. She worked as a professor of contemporary poetry at Manchester Metropolitan University. She was appointed as the Poet Laureate in May 2009. She is also the first woman and the first Scottish poet and first known LGBT poet to hold the position of Poet Laureate. She served as the Poet Laureate from the year 2009 till 2019. Coming to her, some of the very famous works, they are Standing Female Nude. This work has won Scottish Arts Council Award. Next work is Selling Manhattan. This work has won Somerset Mom Award. Meantime, which was published in 1993, has won Whitbread Poetry Prize. Yet another work, Rapture, uh, which was published in 2005, it has won T.S. Eliot Prize. So I have mentioned only some of her very important collection of works. She has written numerous works. Her poems addresses issues like oppression, gender violence in accessible language. Duffy is best known for writing love poems that often take the form of monologues. Some of the topics which are prominent in her works are gender oppression, expressing them in familiar conversational language. Coming to the sonnet as such, now uh, she has taken the first line as epigram from Shakespeare's will. And she has composed the sonnet just as Shakespeare would have done. So let's uh, go through the poem and later on we will analyze the poem in detail. Item I give unto my wife my second best bed from Shakespeare's will. The bed we loved in was a spinning world of forests, castles, torchlight, cliff tops, seas where he would die for pearls. My lover's words were shooting stars which fell to earth as kisses on these lips. My body, now a softer rhyme to his, now echo, assonance, his touch, a verb dancing in the center of a noun. Some nights I dreamed he'd written me, the bed, a page beneath his writer's hands. Romance and drama played by touch, by scent, by taste. In the other bed, the best, our guests dozed on, dribbling their prose. My living, laughing love, I hold him in the casket of my widow's head as he held me upon that best, that next best bed. So this is a very simple poem. Let's analyze it. This poem, a sonnet, appears in The World's Wife. This was published in 1999. It is a collection of poems. The World's Wife contains a number of poems written about the female other halves of famous male figures from history and literature. The collection covers everyone from Eurydice to Charles Darwin's wife. The poem is based on famous passage from Shakespeare's will regarding his second best bed. Duffy suggests that this would be their marriage bed, a memento of their love. And remembers their lovemaking as a form of romance and drama. So that is the context of the poem. The speaker tells us that the bed she shared with her husband was a world where his imagination would run riot and where Shakespeare would romantically woo and entertain Anne with his sweet words and kisses. She was like echo to her husband. Anne's and Shakespeare's bed is compared to poetry, whereas guests sleeping is compared to prose. Written in 14 lines and ending with a rhyming couplet, Duffy's poems resembles the sonnet form that Shakespeare himself made so popular. The Anne of the poem says that the second best bed was the bed they slept in, made love in and wrote poetry in. Duffy speaks in the voice of Anne Hathaway who was a silenced woman. The epigraph is a little piece of history. It is from the Shakespeare's will 
and it tells us that the only item that Shakespeare left for her was the second best bed. She imagines that the bed is a spinning world filled with fanciful and beautiful things like castles and cliff tops. She describes Shakespeare's words as shooting stars and compares their body to a whole bunch of poetic rhythms and echoes. She sometimes dreams that he has written her just as he wrote his plays and says that their guests always got the best bed to sleep which is compared to prose whereas she and her husband slept in the second best bed which is compared to poetry. Now her husband lives in her mind. She holds him in his memory in the, in the same way he held her dearly on the second best bed. Now coming to the historical fact of who Anne Hathaway was. Anne Hathaway was the wife of William Shakespeare. The pair married in 1582 when Shakespeare was a teenager and Anne was nearly eight years older than him. Shakespeare left Anne in uh, left uh, Anne in Stratford upon Avon, and thereupon he went to uh, went to make name for himself as a playwright and actor upon the London stage. He bought the biggest house in New Place. His will famously mentions just one item to be left to Anne: the couple's second bed. Now here is the controversy. Now uh, Carol Anne Duffy is explaining that. Shakespeare leaving only one item for his wife is not because of lack of love but because of you know uh, she wants to give a different perspective different point of view for so many ages uh, the feminist and also the people uh, have uh, you know they felt that Anne Hathaway uh, has not been given the proper place because Shakespeare left her only the, be the second be best bed but then Anne Carol Ann Duffy is giving a different perspective that Shakespeare has given his most prized possession to his wife after his death. Coming to the themes, writing and literature. The poem is about writing as much as it is a poem about love. Duffy compares sex to writing poem throughout. The poem suggests that Anne Hathaway subordinates her writing powers to her husband's. The poem is just a tribute to her husband's skilled writing. Now yet another the theme of the poem is truth. Duffy wants to set record straight about Shakespeare's love for his wife. People tend to interpret that Shakespeare didn't love his wife. Duffy's poem gives a different perspective. Coming to the allusions that's been used in this poem, uh, forest, where when she speaks about forest, uh, Carol Ann Duffy refers to woodland setting in a Midsummer Night's Dream. When she speaks about castles, she refers to Hamlet, Macbeth and King Lear, where we see prominent castles, pearls. When she speaks about pearls, we are reminded of the tempest, full fathom five, thy father lies. And when she speaks about casket, we are reminded of the Merchant of Venice and Portia, Portia's picture being put into three caskets. So that's it uh, for now, friends. Keep learning.